doctors of Reddit, what are the dead giveaway signs that someone is faking? My sister is a pediatric audiologist and this is my favorite story of hers. Apparently, sometime in elementary school, usually the early grades, a ton of kids like to fake hearing loss. Like, not just, oh, I can't hear the teacher. Full on, wanna get hearing aids, etc. Anyway, she explained to me that based on the way she plays the tones, you can usually tell if someone is faking especially when they just pretend they can't hear anything. But it's not 100%, obviously, because hearing loss patterns can be really weird. However, she's caught a number of kids simply by saying, okay, so I'm going to play a random number of tones and they'll go in both the ears. I want you to say yes if you hear it and no if you don't. I have the reverse. My back went out. Extreme sciatica pain. Like being struck by lightning constantly. Couldn't move for days. When someone found me three days later they called 911. Just for the doctor to tell me I was faking it for pain meds. While I was crying in pain I asked him why I'd lay in a pile of my own piss and shit for three days for. Some Vicodin when I literally own a bar. Fucking insane. My favorite thing about this thread is that half of the here's how you know they're faking comments get responses that are all yeah, about that. Let me tell you how that assumption fucked me over and I almost died. When I had a stroke 10 months ago my biggest fear was I was somehow faking it in the ambulance. Ride was a sham and why was I doing it? No it turns out I was having a stroke. I was so worried I was being a faker although I have never done that before. Just a really odd mental state. You can be faking good too. Had a tooth kicked out. Mouth filled with blood and swelling. I'd stuck a tissue in to try to stop the blood. I've presented to the triage at the dental hospital. I'm dribbling blood as I talk. She asks me if it hurts and I said, a little bit. She looked at me dead in the eye and said, One of the many things we triage on is pain. Gotcha, good nurse. Hurts like a motherfucker. I've literally been kicked in the face. Quote. Thanks for that, notes taken. Was patched up and out of there within an hour. Edit. Rip and box. Lol. And thanks for the awards. Whenever the symptoms aren't there when the patient doesn't know they're being watched. I had someone fake a stroke recently and walked in on her walking around her room independently. After pretending to be limp on her left side, letting us take complete care of her and wiping her butt for her. It was wild, y'all. One time I was in hospital with decompression sickness and neurological damage and I couldn't piss. I told a nurse I needed a catheter which she did right away and I filled three liter bags straight off. Anyway, she commented that if a man actually says he needs a long tube pushed up the hole in his penis, then you can be sure he needs it done. My wife is a doctor and she had dealt with people faking things like one of their legs simply not working. The trick is to tell them to do some other thing with a positive phrasing making it seem like doing so we'll prove the patient's story is true. While it proves the opposite. This works for both people who are actively faking it and people who have subconsciously convinced themselves the problem is real. For example, if they say their right leg can't move, you first ask them to try lifting it which they try and obviously fail to move or flex any muscles in it. Then you act intrigued and say something like, now your left leg is the one that that works fine right? Go ahead and lift it up for me for comparison. While they are doing this, you still casually have your hand on their right leg which you had placed there when you were feeling for any activity when they tried to lift it. Now when the person is laying there and lifts their left leg to prove their right one doesn't work, they will naturally flex their right leg to provide balance with their left leg in the air. If they are able to flex their right leg then but won't even flex it when they claim to be trying to move it, 
then you know their leg still works you just have to narrow down if they realize are faking it intentionally a nurse thought i was faking that i could not swallow when i woke up from jaw surgery when i came out of the surgery and was panicking telling them i couldn't swallow my own saliva the nurse just told me yes you can this surgery wouldn't have anything to do with your ability to swallow I could also barely speak, and started crying and pleading with her to believe me. I ended up having cranial nerve damage that paralyzed half of my tongue, trachea, esophagus, and vocal cords. It took eight months to heal. I drank thick in water, which is as gross as it sounds. For eight months, having a healthcare professional not believe you during trauma is absolutely scarring. Edit clarified that the nurse was the only one not believing me. My surgeon absolutely did. It was scary though because he actually looked frightened when he finally came in to examine me. Like he had never seen this before. If someone is truly unconscious their thumb always wiggle, just say that out loud to yourself. Not a doctor but a paramedic. Tons of calls to the jail for inmates with seizures. I lift the arm over their face and let it go they'll move it to prevent hitting their face or I'll lightly brush their eyelashes and they'll twitch to it. I'm a nurse on a floor that deals with a lot of chronic and acute pain patients. Most recent instance was this lady from a few weeks ago that was apparently splitting the oxycodone. We were giving her in half in her mouth and then when the nurse's backs were turned, she would stuff it in a pill jar. A night nurse caught her in the act and all of her shit had to be searched. We found 20 half tablets of oxycodone she had been stashing. She told us that she was saving them for her family in case they need them because it's just so hard to get an oxycodone prescription these days. I had her a few days after that, and she was having some abdominal pain. Stat x-ray showed only gas. She just really needed to fart, but she was screaming claiming it was a 10, and making a huge fucking scene. She demanded dilated throughout her IV, and she wanted it to be pushed fast. Huge red flag right there. She wanted the high, not the relief. Doc straight up said he wouldn't give her dilated because she was already on so many opiates. She then demanded lorazepam, still throughout her IV of course. Doc was like fine whatever. Just one time and only a low-end dose. I was flushing her IV with normal saline first, to make sure her IV was patent. And she leans back and is like, ooh that's so much better already. Hadn't even given her the lorazepam yet. SMDH. I don't know why anyone would want to fake anything medical. Unconsciousness in particular. I got a compound fracture recently and called 911 on myself and was put on hold. Fun stuff, but got through and asked them to send help. Operator was a badass and kept asking me questions to keep me conscious. The ambulance folks arrive, casually got out of the ambulance, walk up to me and then saw the bone sticking out of my body, and said, quote, Oh, you're actually hurt, quote, yes. Did you think I called 911 because I spilled some lemonade? Then it occurred to me that most of their calls must be horse shit. But to cause me even more confusion, I received close to a $2,000 bill for the privilege of actual help and the ride to the hospital. That ludicrous bill is no fault of the M's. I'm very much appreciative of their existence and they don't get nearly enough credit, but the best part of receiving that bill the ambulance ride was roughly $1,850. The fentanyl they gave me was $2.15. Brief note for all the student doctors out there. People can pass stroke field tests and still dot be having a stroke. I could do everything on the list while I had a clot in my brain. Verified by CT and MRI. Except I couldn't stop vomiting. Good times. Be aware sometimes shit doesn't look like you think it should. Nurse here. I had a teenager overdose on Zoloft and start having strange seizure-like episodes. 
What made them particularly strange is that they all followed a predictable pattern of onset. First, he would lower the bed. Next, he would turn the TV volume down. And finally, he would check to see if I was nearby. There was pretty severe thrashing about without any abnormalities in breathing, heart rate, pupils and he was still able to communicate with me throughout the entire episode. Unsurprisingly, Eek also failed to show any abnormalities. I'm reading through this and hoping, my doctor doesn't think I'm crazy. I've been recovering from long-haul COVID and it makes it seem like I want meds but in reality, I just want answers. Still some time in officially becoming a doctor, but have been taught what to watch out for. Doctor expects symptoms from you, not signs. People who Google diseases often tell sickness that they shouldn't be aware of. Refusing blood work, exaggerating your condition, description not matching their history. Around public holidays, long weekends, suspicion is always increased. I had a 360 testicular torsion and a doc thought I just had some inflamed glands due to my reactions. Luckily I came back after they sent me home or I would have lost my ball. Not a doctor but a therapist for some reason adolescents like faking did. Formerly multiple personality disorder, it's a pretty rare and debated diagnosis in our field. I've seen people fake it by mimicking how it's portrayed in movies and on TV. Red flags are them telling you, I have multiple personality disorder and, of course, not meeting the actual diagnostic criteria. Some people feel like the common diagnoses aren't big or special enough to accurately represent their struggles, so they cosplay something worse. Whatever you're working through is a big deal to us. If you feel like you have to fake or exaggerate your symptoms for your therapist, consider finding a different therapist. Editing to clarify my last sentence since I'm getting some aggressive replies. If you don't feel like you can be authentic with your therapist, continue searching until you find a therapist you feel comfortable with. Sometimes it's just not a good fit. It happens. You're not obligated to continue seeing a therapist you don't feel comfortable with. If you feel like you need to fake or exaggerate something to be taken seriously by a therapist, it's not a good fit. Continue searching until you find someone who takes you seriously. Also, I'm not a solid resource for DID information. It's not a common diagnosis and my experience with it has been extremely limited. Stick to peer-reviewed information and experts in the field for the most accurate and up-to-date information. Not a doctor, but doctors often think my family is faking for an unknown reason. When there's something wrong with our organs, our white blood cell count doesn't go up. My younger sister got appendicitis when she was in her early teens, crying from the pain but blood work showed nothing was amiss. If it hadn't been for other tests and my dad's insistence on them, she might not have been treated in time. So they open her up in surprise. A gross appendix that was close to bursting. My dad insisted because of an operation he had just had to remove his gallbladder. He was in so much pain that he was vomiting. Could hardly walk. It had been building up for a while and he was pretty sure what it was. He went to the doctor, but blood work showed his white count was normal. My dad had to scream in agony on their table for ages before they finally gave in and took him to surgery. They go in, see his perfectly healthy looking gallbladder. They pull it out, cut it open, and sand spills out. Dry sand. We learned later that it had completely stopped working and totally filled with protein chains. It was removed before it started killing my dad in earnest. So yes, people fake it, people lie, but do double check just in case. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.